All right, welcome back, Dart family, to an early morning Saturday edition <laughs> of the Dart Language Tour. Um, last video, we finished most of constructors inside of classes, um, but this time we are going to finish the last section in that, uh, which is factory constructors. So during the course of your development, you may find instances where you need to get fancy uh, with what you're doing uh, in your constructor methods. And typically, you won't have to know what a factory is ahead of time. You'll try to do something fancy, um, and the analyzer will warn you likely that there is something wrong with your code, like you can't do a certain thing in a constructor the way you're trying to do it, unless you use the keyword factory. Um, so it allows you to unlock new powers, if you will, out of your constructor. Um, but again, uh, unless you know precisely what you're doing, um, sometimes the, the analyzer will warn you. Okay, so what is a factory constructor? Let's see what the authors have in store for us. So they say, use the factory keyword when implementing a constructor that doesn't always create a new instance of its class. So there's two things here. A new instance, meaning, as we'll see later, you can return an existing instance from a cached store um, and then this other part is of its class, meaning you don't want to return an instance of this class itself. Maybe you want to return an instance of some other class or a subtype, something like that. Okay, so when you read this first sentence, um, you use this when you're implementing a constructor that doesn't either create a new instance or an instance of its own class. Okay. Um, for example, a factory constructor might return an instance from a cache, okay? Uh, or it might return an instance of a subtype, okay? So that's what we were referring to in this first sentence. It says another use case for factory constructors in, is initializing a final variable using logic that can't be handled in the initializer list. And remember, uh, that initializer list is um, after the constructor signature, um, behind those uh, two dots on the colon, that's your initializer list, which comes before the constructor body. Okay, so they've kind of listed three ways that factories are used. Um, okay, so if you're getting fancy, you might need a, you might need a factory. Um, this tip here is related to that last sentence about late initialization of a final variable. Um, you know, if you find that you're not able to to do that in an initializer list, right? They're talking about initializing a final variable here. You can use late final, but you have to be careful about that, and that's beyond the scope of this video. Okay, what we are going to concern ourselves with is returning an instance from a cache. Um, and they give us a nice little example here. Here's the class we're going to set up. Um, and then we are going to invoke it. Okay. Um, right. So in the following example, the logger factory constructor, which is either that or that, there's two of them. It returns objects from a cache The and the logger.json uh, from JSON factory initializes a final variable from a JSON object. Um, it initializes a final variable. It initializes name. Um, I don't know that it does that, honestly. Yeah, I'll show you why. Um, Maybe I'm just interpreting it differently, but I've done this a couple times already. So, <laughs> um, okay. So the the concept of 
caching something. Like caches can be hard to, to work with. They're not direct. Um, um, take a swig of water. If we didn't have to cache anything or bust a cache later, um, our, our work would be pretty direct and straightforward. Uh, but sometimes you need to use a cache um, to uh, m provide a better user experience. S so, for example, um, you know, say you, you're delivering images or videos, you know, large files to someone in a mobile application, and they are located in the Philippines, okay? Um, and you're a developer in the U.S. and you're uploading videos here. Well, you may need to cache some of those videos and images locally, right? So redistribute them, put them close to the people who are going to be consuming that content um, rather than those individuals across the world making fresh requests for fresh uh, objects from like one central store uh, for those videos. So that's the idea behind a cache. Um, um, you know, if there's an expensive operation, you're hitting a um, like some kind of data warehouse where the the database uh, you can't make quick reads, right? Um, not right. Uh, you can't make quick reads um, by by the nature of how it's set up. So, like Amazon Glacier is is one of those types of like data stores where it's it's not intended to be accessed frequently. Um, so maybe you hit that data store, right, with a request. It's in, it's, it is an expensive request because reads are expensive from these long-term stores. Um, and as a result, you know, maybe you, you cache that value locally on the user's device or something if it's just you know, some information that you're pulling out. But the, the act of actually fetching it was expensive. Okay, so that's the idea behind a cache. Right, so you could think like, you know, sometimes these, maybe there's a log file that gets very large. It's recording all the, the interactions your user is having with your application. Um, we don't always want to spin up a new instance of that. It can be very memory resource intensive. Um, and so what we want to do is um, cache it and return that if, if it exists. Now you could try to just look at this and, and learn by osmosis, but I really don't find that that's the best way to learn this concept. Um, Cause this one, this one was new for me. Um, haven't done anything like this in Ruby or Ruby on Rails before. Um, and so I thought the best way actually is just to build it from scratch. Okay. Uh, do things iteratively um, until we get the, the picture. Okay. So let's build a logger class. Just like that, okay. it's 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 an empty logger class. Um, you know, let's just uh, create a new one like this, and then we will print um, put it on a new line uh, the hash code. Okay, so this is the emptiest, nakedest class. Um, it has a default constructor because it extends object and we are able to create a new instance of logger and and um, print the hash code which is a numeric representation of that particular object um, but now I want to create bog so I have log and I have bog and these are um, two These are two instances of logger, and they are not equal to each other because these hash codes are different. Okay, each time I run it, it, it generates a new hash code, just representing where you know this thing is in memory. And eventually, I want to get to the point where if I create a new instance and it's created the same way, I don't want to create a brand new one. So log is going to be represented by some value, but then I want bog to be represented by the same value. That is where we're going. Okay. Um, so 
yeah, so that's the default constructor. Uh, we're gonna have this thing called name, so final string name. And then we're gonna need a constructor, okay? So this is called error driven development, EDD. The final variable name must be initialized. Try initializing the variable. We can initialize it there, or we can do it in a constructor, right? So we can say logger, pass in the name, and then say this.name equals name. Uh, and then we have an empty constructor body just because we can. Okay, so we get a few warnings. Um, it says use initializing formals when possible. What that means is do that instead. Okay, um, this is the syntactic sugar we saw in the last video for how to um, assign name because this is so redundant and we have this shadowing business here where we're, you know, this name we're passing in, it goes there and then we're assigning it to name and by using this convention of the, the same variable name, um, it gives us this syntactic sugar. But I'm gonna leave it um, like this for now um, and I'll, I'll show you why later. Um, right, and then something I found out recently is I don't have to end this line with a semicolon. I get a, a little warning, but I can just end it with an empty class uh, constructor body. Um, okay, this other one says don't access members with this unless avoiding shadowing. And what we're doing here is avoiding shadowing. And we talked about that in the last video, I believe. And then finally, this other warning says uh, use a semicolon instead of um, the curly braces for empty constructor bodies. Okay, but um, again, something I, I, I really wanna show here is maybe that um, there's three sections, okay? The first section is our, is really our constructor signature Okay, we have the name parameters. Uh, we have this little, this little um, light of mine, I'm just kidding. We have this little thing here. Okay, that, that colon uh, that separates the signature on the left from the initializer right here. Okay, um, and then we have you know our constructor body out here, and typically that goes to a new line, right? Um, okay, so those are the that's the anatomy of a constructor. I wonder if you can just do can you do that? I don't think you can do that. No. Okay, so what we do now is we need to pass in a name. So I'm going to pass in my name. Right, so now my constructor, uh, it takes a name. It goes, hey, where does this name go? Okay, here I am. And now I want to assign it to this variable. Um, and that's all it's doing. But still, even if I pass in Aaron in both of these, uh, this constructor is built in such a way, which is the default mechanism of a constructor, is to instantiate a new instance of the logger class, okay? But we're still getting two different hash codes because uh, these are these are two distinct uh, objects. Um, they are like each other, but they are not each other. Okay, so eventually, again, we want to be able to do this and get the same value over here. Um, right, so. Let's write some pseudocode. We want to pass in a name. And remember the idea of a cache is go look in the cache. If name is there, return an associated logger instance. If the name is not there, like hasn't been used yet, uh, 
create new logger instance. Oh, and by the way, um, store said new instance in the cache. And this is because, <laughs> just in case we want to call logger Aaron multiple times. Okay, so th this is our pseudocode. This is what we want to achieve. All right, so we're going to pass in a name and then go look in a cache. So where can we store um, a cache? Like we could, we could try to do it here. Can, can we do it here? I don't know. Let's have a little local variable called cache. Um, and it needs to store um, a map. And, and, and the reason is because I want to do eventually like some kind of lookup where I can say like cache Aaron. Okay. If I look if I look that up, I should be able to return, you know, whatever logger instance this is. Okay. So there is some some logger instance associated with it. And what that looks like in a cache is going to be, you know, Aaron and then some some logger instance like so. Um, so it'll, it'll just be the type. So it'll be like string and logger. Okay, so we can even go one step further and call this string and logger um, initialized empty map. Okay, um, and let's say if cache name, so I'm, I'm passing in, I'm pointing to my screen like you can see it. Uh, if I pass in Aaron, <laughs> it's going to come here and we're going to, we're going to try to look it up, right? So if the name is there, um, we want to return. think this right just return it um, otherwise so this first block says you've already initialized uh, logger once and we stored it in the cache I'm able to find it right if cache name um, uh, this needs to return a boolean value um, okay so here's um, I'm still in Ruby Ruby land. So I can say cache dot and I get all these properties and methods in this in this list here. Um, I'm, I'm able to get that because I've defined cache as this um, this type of map. Okay, there is a handy method that we didn't have to create the the dart people created for us. Um, <laughs> the dart people like there from a planet that isn't Earth or something, the dark people. Uh, the cache contains a key, pass in that name, um, right? So if if the key Aaron exists, then just do a lookup, right? Um, and I think this is how you do a lookup, but ah, there's our little, our little thing. I'll get to that in a second. Um, right, but if it's the first time, meaning the cache isn't going to contain it. The cache is going to be empty the first time we ever call this. Um, we want to create a new logger instance, okay? And we'll pass in that name. Um, I guess let's store that in a, in a variable called um, log here, or just logger. That way, it looks different from this one down here. Even though this 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 um, this variable is has you know function scope, as they say. This, this one has constructor scope. Um, so var logger equals a new logger. Um, now, what did I say? Okay, look in the cache. If it's there, return it. And th that's what we're doing there. Um, if the name is not there, so else, create a new logger instance. Here's what we did, okay. Oh, and by the way, store uh, 
new logger in the cache. So now let's say cache um, name equals logger. Okay, so that's how we do assignment. Uh, just in case we want to call logger again multiple times, but then of course we want to return logger at the end. We could we could be fancier about this, but right now it's okay. Right, um, so I think we can, um, you know, there's a couple of problems with this, is that each time I call logger, right, like down here, this cache is going to empty out every time, okay? <laughs> so e each time I, I do that, it's going to, it's going to clear the cache, and so effectively, my cache isn't isn't working right now as it is. Okay, but let's let's assume that somehow there's some sort of um, actual memoization or something going on here like that. I don't. I, that's a Ruby thing. You can't do that in Dart apparently. Um, but the thing I want to show you here is that. We're trying to return something inside of a constructor body, and we get a nice error message. Uh, constructors can't return values. Try removing the return statement or using a factory constructor. That's beautiful. Okay, this is why I love Dart so much. Um, this is called return in generative constructor. Constructors can't return values. Um, so the analyzer produces this diagnostic, a generative constructor contains a return statement that specifies a value to be returned. Uh, for example, you know, if, if I wanted to create a new log, right, a new logger instance, but then I come in here and I try to get fancy, um, you know, 42 seems to be the, the popular number all the kids are using these days. Okay, that gives me the same kind of thing. Um, factory. Okay, now there's other problems that, that pop up, but basically you see what I'm doing? I'm, I'm just returning an, in, an integer. Um, I'm kind of like overriding the, the natural inclination um, or the natural behavior of a constructor to do something it wasn't intended really to do as it is. Okay. Okay, generative constructors always return the object that was created and therefore can't return a different object. Um, so it's almost like you could have the word generative here. You know, like if that was a keyword, hey, let's be very verbose. This isn't a factory constructor, this is a generative constructor. But we don't have that. So just know that this is a generative constructor, usually. Um, right. Okay, so something like you can't do that. Um, a common fix is to not have that return statement and just actually use a generative constructor. So maybe you've made a mistake. Um, the, the other way is to convert it to be a factory constructor. <clears throat> okay, so here's a, a static instance of, of the class. Um, and what they're doing is returning that same instance. So I think this is like a, a singleton, I believe, where it's um, you're only allowed to return one instance. Okay, um, that might be a cool example to go over in a future video, but not now. We're doing caches. Okay, so let's make this a factory. Okay, so that got rid of those errors. Um, but now this thing, what does it say? Um, yeah, line four, the body might complete normally causing null to be returned. Um, okay. Do, do, do. Yep, yep, let's try to get rid of this. Okay. Final variable name must be initialized 
the value of logger can be returned like that. Ah. And then the value of name dot name. So I haven't really assigned name, I've just used it. Interesting, it's almost like I don't even need this. Here's a, I'm kind of curious. Can I get away with that? <laughs> okay, so this is interesting. I don't even think we need the, this um, this variable, this, this instance variable, because we're just using this throwaway variable. Um, yeah, that's super interesting. We don't actually need to to have that necessarily. Okay, um, so again, look, all our errors are gone. Um, I said this might not work, but let's test it and see. Let's run this. Mm, okay, this is a good error. This is something it didn't warn us about because it, it couldn't know this until it ran. Uh, it says uncaught range error, maximum call stack size exceeded. Maximum call stack size exceeded. Now you can Google that to see what it means but uh, let's, let's take a look. Okay, when I called this the first time, my cache was empty. So it popped down here into the else statement. It tried to create a new logger, except if I pass in the name, Aaron, okay, and try to create a new one, it comes back up here. Cache still hasn't been created. It tries to create Aaron comes back up here, comes back down here, comes back up here, comes back down here. So it's an infinite loop. Um, and we can't create the cache first because we haven't created the logger. So we have a little bit of a problem here is we need, we need to call a different constructor altogether. Um, so let's let's try to do that. So remember, this is pseudocode for this this one here. So I'm going to create a new constructor up here, um, and let's call this logger this dot name. Okay. Um, now maybe we do need this after all. So here's our our name variable. Um, so I can call just like this, okay. Um, the problem is these have the same signature. They take one positional argument. Um, this dot name, it knows it's a string, so it's effectively this same signature and they're conflicting. Um, and But really, when I call logger Aaron like this, I want this one to run. I want my factory to run because this is how I'm intending to use it. I'm intending to use it as a, a cache um, I don't want to call this one directly. And there's a way to do that in Dart. Um, something we did earlier was, uh, it was called a named constructor, okay? So we had like point and we had point.origin. Um, we need a named constructor. So let's call this one only call me from within this class. This is a terrible name, but it's very explicit, so it's not that bad. <laughs> but basically, I'm, I'm trying to tell people, like, we could have said something like logger.internal is dot name, and in fact, we can have both because they're different names, even though they do the same thing, we can have our choice. Um, let's use internal. Um, but this is this is the idea: is that we only want to call this from the class. So we want to also somehow prevent somebody from being able to call internal directly. We don't want this to happen. The way you do that in Dart is put this little underscore in front of it and it effectively makes it a private uh, constructor. Okay, so again, here we're using 
underscore internal. Um, and one quick note about this. A private constructor is not really just private to the class. The private constructor, and we'll read this later in, 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 the, in the language tour when we get down to um, libraries and visibility, is this private constructor is only visible it, it is fully visible to this library. And because Dartpad, this is a single file. Okay, this is this is like main.dart. This is this is one file. Um, we don't have the idea of directories and other files and importing and exporting classes in Dartpad. Um, and that's why I'm able right here to call this um, this internal thing directly but just know if this was in another file and you know down here we're in you know this is a new file okay and we had to import logger like so or similarly um, all of a sudden we wouldn't be able to call internal like this um, so keep that nugget in the back of your head. Okay, so so now the first time I call it, it's gonna call this constructor, this named constructor instead. All right, and there it's using the syntactic sugar, um, this dot name, so it's setting the name value. So now my instance has um, a name property. Um, it should be Aaron. I'm gonna store it in the cache and then return that. Let's see what happens now. Okay. It's still not working, and the problem, maybe we just need to run it again. Maybe we needed to initialize or charge the cache the first time, but we don't. We're still getting different values, and that's because um, this cache variable here is being reset each time we create a new logger. The way we can solve that, I'm going to get rid of this comment just for now, um, and I think we got the gist of this, so I'm going to clear up some space. The way we can solve that is by using what's called a, um, a class variable. So if I wanted to print logger, well, first of all, I can print log.name, okay? Name is a property for the instance of this class. This is an instance variable. But if I wanted to print like logger.className, oops, sorry, like that, um, I can define a static final string called class name, call it logger, okay? And this way I'm, I'm always able to know what is the, the name of this class, right? Um, and, and, and this is a, a property associated with the class itself, not the instance. So it's always going to be the same especially because I've set it and I'm not ever changing it. We can do something similar. Okay, so let me get rid of that. We can do something similar uh, with a cache. Uh, let's do static uh, final map cache like that. Okay, and remember we wanted a string logger. signature like so so let's get rid of that um, right so now it looks like we do longer dot we should have access to cache that's a, a property uh, we could print that if we wanted to let me get rid of this log dot name and uh, you know I could be verbose about this as well. Again, string logger. Um, and to just provide some documentation, I want to show that this is something like Aaron um, and then some logger. And that's some instance, right? Or some, some little logger. Okay. Um, right, so here 
When I call cache directly, that's effectively calling logger.cache. This is the verbose way to do it. So each time I'm, I'm using cache, I just say logger.cache. Um, but you can see how that gets pretty redundant um, to do that each time. Uh, so I'm just going to leave that off. Just know that this cache does not refer to, like we could, I think we could also have a, um, a an instance variable called cache. Um, no, it's gonna it's gonna confuse those things, isn't it? Um, can't define static member cache and have instance member logger dot cache um, with the same name. So it, it's it's saying we have a name conflict. Um, but if we didn't have this, okay, it still wouldn't work here uh, because instance members can't be accessed from a factory constructor. <laughs> Okay, mm -hmm. so the instance variable won't even work, right? Um, so let's get rid of that, let's get rid of that documentation and go back to this. Okay, so now we have this cache associated with the logger itself. It's gonna keep, keep count kind of of its own instances, okay? So now let's run it and see what happens. Okay, cool, there is our cache. Um, we printed that first, uh, Aaron, instance of logger, and here's the hash code. They're the same. Each time I run this, it's going to return the same one every single time uh, for both instances. Okay, and that's exactly what we wanted. Uh, let's go back down here to factory constructors. Okay. Um, I don't really know what the authors were trying to do with this mute and um, using it down here. They're just, they're just printing a message and saying, you know, trying to control if something's muted or not. Um, I didn't really see any value to that. Um, yeah, and we, we came up with the same thing, uh, so that's good. Um, this is a little bit different though. Um, and so what I wanna show you is the wonderful thing about exploring the existing classes like map or the types in, in Dart is they have some handy built-in functions. So again, this is saying if the key exists in the cache, if this is already here, look up the instance of logger that's already there and return it. So in this case, this was the new one, but then the second time we created bog, it, it looked in the cache and it just returned the same one. Um, there is a um, a method on map called put if absent. Okay, and when I click on that, we can see some documentation over here. It takes a key of type string. Okay, a key is just like you know our key value pair. So it's going to take name. That's the first thing. Okay. Um, and then it takes a function that returns a logger because we've said this type on the right is a logger. Um, so when it when, when you read something that says it takes a function, you can just substitute that for now. Okay, that's fine. Um, it says look up the value of key and add a new entry if it isn't there. Um, it returns the value associated to the key if there is one. Otherwise, it calls if absent. That's like an internal thing um, to the function, to the method itself, uh, to get a new value and associates the key to that value and then returns the new value. So it effectively does this if else statement in one line. Okay, I'm going to do this um, the arrow syntax and then I'm going to say. Um, logger internal name. Yeah. Okay, so I'm just going to comment this out so you can still see it. All right. Uh, what is happening? Return. Right. Remember, we, we used return once before and it says, hey, you need a factory to do that. Um, so we, we still need this return statement. Um, Okay, so call log logger error in the first time. Put if absent. 
um, it is absent, so it's going to put it, and it calls this on the right. Um, the second time, bog um, tries to create logger Aaron. Put if absent. Uh, it's not absent, so it's not going to run that. So it's just going to return the value associated with name. Look up the value of a key. Add a new entry if it isn't there, or return the value of associated to the key. And that's it. Um, okay, so let's get rid of this now. Uh, so now we have something that is very similar to this. I think it's the exact same thing, actually. The only difference is right now they, they're also using this, um, this private indicator. Okay, so let's modify these. Uh, again, we can call cache directly, um, even though we don't really intend to because dartpad is a single file but if this was imported into another file we wouldn't be able to call cache directly because it's only meant to be accessed within the class itself not directly from outside the class okay um, and then the other thing they, they go on to do um, and we can just I think plop this in at this point we've learned a lot we've earned it um, is we want to be able to Uh, call var, what is it? Let's just call it jog, and JSON log, logger dot from JSON. It takes a, um, a JSON object. Okay, so in our case, we are going to have, um, yeah, how are they doing this? Yeah, it's the JSON, so they were saying uh, they're passing in this this key called name and then that's their value. So for us, it's going to be name and um, Aaron. Okay. So that is, <clears throat> this is our JSON. Um, and I can print uh, jog dot uh, hash code. And we'll see if that's the same object. And what I want to show you here is they are just taking the name. Okay, so JSON name returns Aaron, and just in case it's not a string because it's, um, I guess, an object in this case. Uh, they call to string to make sure it is Aaron. So effectively, they're calling logger Aaron. <laughs> okay, that, that's all it's doing. That's just another way to resolve to that string, um, which is why initializes a final variable from a, a JSON object. Yeah, it, it's just, it's almost like a redirecting um, constructor. Okay, so all our hash codes are the same. Now, let me show you something. Do you remember redirecting constructors? You could have this named thing and then go point to another constructor. Let's try to do that on the initializer list instead. Um, so instead of in the constructor body, remember we can have this initializer list. So we could say this and then pass in, right? What does this take? So like this one takes that, but we're gonna pass in whatever's coming here, which is JSON. Yeah, we're just gonna do the same thing. We're gonna resolve it to string like so and get rid of this constructor body. Let me um, put this on a new line. Okay, and what I want to do is comment it out in this format. So you can see in the constructor body we were trying to return a call to this other one, right? Which was correct. Um, but instead I was like, hey, aren't we just redirecting to another uh, constructor? Let's use that redirection stuff. Um, do I need to do that? No, that makes it worse. Okay, um, so this one should call this one here because it matches the signature. 
Uh, the only problem is it says maybe we do need that. Must be what? What am I missing? What if we don't have factory here? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. The, okay. So yeah, the reason I did that. So typically, I notice I need to use a factory keyword when I'm returning inside of a constructor body. I don't have a constructor body. I'm trying to redirect. Um, so the factory was kind of a redundant thing. Um, so let's call from JSON. Let's redirect here. So now the problem, this is what I, I wanted to show and reproduce, um, is that uh, we get this error on redirecting generative to a non-generative constructor. So generative constructors can't redirect to a factory constructor. Okay, so you're probably going to have to um, just remove the redirection if it's a mistake. Um, otherwise, let's see, what do they say? Um, yeah, if it doesn't need to, you just remove it. Uh, otherwise, make the other constructor be generative, non-factory. So they're saying we could make this one non-factory, but it's kind of intended to be a factory, isn't it? Um, so just know if you're trying to redirect, you might have to do something like this instead. Okay. Um, you like so. All right, what did I change? Ah, <laughs> there's my uh, my friendly little message to use the factory keyword. Right and all is well with the world once again. <clears throat> okay, so um, this is a factory constructor. Um, specifically, we have used it to um, return objects from a cache. Remember there were two other uh, scenarios they mentioned, returning an instance of a subtype, or initializing a final variable that uh, using logic that can't be handled in the initializer list. So we're not going to go into that this time. Um, right. Okay. Um, the other thing to note is you invoke a factory constructor just like you would any other constructor. So if you know if you're using a third-party library, um, yeah, I do want to show you one more thing actually. From the outside, I can't, I can't tell if this is a constructor, right? And the only way I'll be able to tell that it's using this sort of caching mechanism um, or it's returning a subtype that isn't the thing is if I notice I call the constructor uh, and it, it gives me an, uh, an object that is not this one um, or if it returns the same one each time I invoke a new one, supposedly. Um, okay, so from the outside, it, it looks exactly the same. The last thing we want to look at is I was I was playing with this um, uh, this tutorial for from Zyeste, um and I'll I'll link to this in the notes because it's a really good one. <clears throat> is um, there's a library called JSON Serializable. It's very popular. I think a lot of people use it, <clears throat> and the way you use it is um, you put this little annotation. At the top of your class, and because when you do that, um, you're able to also use this part thing right here, and it gives you another file that's generated, um, and it saves you from having to write uh, all this this kind of boilerplate um, JSON code, right? Um, this one's a little bit different actually, but um, where it just takes in the JSON. Um, but I'm, I'm, I'm able to uh, pass in JSON 
Okay, so this is exactly the same of what we just had. So this is dynamic instead of an object. Um, and then we're able to use this method, okay, that returns a message. You know, this is just the object here in this, this particular use case. Um, but this is a factory constructor, right, right here. Um, and we had to use factory because we're returning um, something that is not a regular instance. So what we're doing here um, is we're still returning a message, but we're kind of like accessing it from outside the class. So this is kind of like, this is another use case. <clears throat> um, okay, this is, this is another use case. The one thing I, I don't like about uh, the linter at this point in time, if I look at Dart Analysis, is it says that um, constructors can't, oh no, there it is. Okay, I lied. Um, I can only see the top line in this description, so you have to hover over it. Um, and then there's my, um, my suggestion, right? Try removing the return statement or using a, a factory constructor. Okay. Right. Okay, so that is another use case. JSON serializable. Um, thank you so much for spending your time with me. Um, good luck. Ask questions in the comments if you've been so brave to watch through the end. I applaud you. Um, and we'll catch you next time on Methods. See you later.